try to help with. Uh, this is the Church of Christ at Will Clayton Parkway, Humble, Texas. This is February the 10th, 2019. This is our message this morning. Loving people when they don't love you is the love of God. We're going we're gonna to validate that. Loving people when they don't love you is the love of God. Brethren, you and I are going to have to go to battle. You got to get out the cushy seats of the church and you got to go to work. Uh, <clears throat> and the church of Christ is the place of redemption, brethren. And I'm going to take my time. We're going to get through. Got a lot to do this morning. Brethren, some kind of way, somebody changed the sign like in the cartoons and turned north to south while we were following Jesus. And we didn't keep our eye on him. The church of Christ, in many locations, those families have become the place of condemnation to the world without showing them how to be rescued. And then when they get baptized into the church of Christ, we tell them things contrary to what we said when they came to Christ, that somehow their past sins cannot be forgiven. I'm going to tell you something, brethren. That's, that's, that's fighting words to the righteous. Not, not to the seat ones, to the righteous. The church of Christ is the only place in existence, whether on the moon or on the earth, that you can come to to be redeemed and to receive mercy. To put your life back together. And to move forward. That's right. Some of us have let men teach. Certain sins can't be forgiven. Mm. After baptism. Guess what? You no longer the hospital we want to come to. I don't want to go there with you. I'm serious. I don't want to go to church with you. I wouldn't have got baptized if you told me some nonsense. If I'd heard some of these nonsense. I'm telling you I'd still be in the Catholic church. Because to tell me. That I can't, once I get baptized, I can't ever sin again. I'm going to go to hell. Do you understand how damnable that is? Do you understand that makes the church no longer the place of redemption? It's a joke now. And you might be a part of a joke if you don't watch it where you go and what you gather to and what you get into. Because this is the place where you get lifted up, retooled, and put back together. And then... Better than the army, you can be all that you can be. Mm -hmm. I see somebody been lying in the church. And I'm telling you, now, nah, I'm just being real. Before I die, I want to let everybody know that know me. You can have any goal you want. The church is the place of redemption. Amen. Amen. And after baptism, since the Old Testament already told us, no man served God and sent it not, it's going to be a whole bunch of vomiting, diarrhea, colds, flu, spiritual level, after baptism. And somebody got to go to hell off a line saying, oh, since you did this, you can never be that. Now see, I'm telling you, I'm ready to preach this morning. And I hope you take this and go all oh, where you shop and where you go. Let people know you need to be redeemed. You need to come with me. You can come on where I worship. Man, you, listen, let me tell you something. You can't send folks everywhere to worship. Do you know that? That's right, that's right. Every hospital, not even good Methodist, says insist on Methodist. And that's why it's always full. You can hardly get in there. Because they haven't got the word out and people busting the door. And I'm telling you, beds be all lying. It's not because they're sorry. They're just that busy. Because somebody, man, I want the Methodist. You need to go to Methodist. I'm not here to brag on that hospital. But I'm telling you. They sit out a message and they say, I want you to understand, we're the best. Do you think that about where you work? If not, maybe you're the problem. Amen. Don't have to say it. I've never asked for amen. I'm saying it. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. I'm telling you this. If you're somewhere where people think 
that they have to be Jesus after they get baptized, that's not the church of Christ. I'm sorry to tell you. I don't know who lied to you. I don't even see Moses doing that. And he brought the law. Abraham is the father of faith and he messed up big time, multiple times. Well, another man said, a man, you know, told his wife, you holding your, your husband holding you up, woman. So your husband blocking you, telling people you his sister. Everybody got to walk right. That's right. So when people don't, don't act like there's no more hope later. See, this is what's wrong with us, brethren. This, I'm telling you, I, I know. And I said us. I'm throwing me in it. But I'm, I'm telling you, you, do what you want. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to do this. Ever. I'm not going to let anybody near me to spit that out as if God can't fix stuff. We tell people, come to the church. Get baptized. You need to get baptized. And when they get baptized, if they sneeze, they're on their way to hell and there's no hope for them. You think that's the church? Did somebody see? But but you know what? You know why we do that? Because there's certain sins we don't do, and we've overcome. But we'll point to other person like that sin there. It, it, no hope for you, because see we overcame that. But you know, every one of us got something. If you think like that, God will let you slide right back into what you were. You know why you do that? Because you're fake. Because you're acting like because somebody else did something you didn't do. That you're all that and two bags of chips, not just one, two. This is the place where people come to get it right. That's right. And when they fall, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. Yeah, not in the church of Christ in some location. He fall once, they're going to keep their foot on his neck and say, you're never getting up here. Maybe somewhere else you can get up. What's wrong with that, brother? Do you know what's wrong? I know what's wrong. It's called false doctrine. And you think you and so you think you think those brethren are of the Lord, right? You really think that they're of the Lord? Somebody lied, brethren. Somebody <coughs> lied. Do you understand that what redemption means? You know, people go to the hospital and they get more sick than when they were when they were there. Sometimes you can catch something there. Touch the wrong knob. They didn't clean it right. Do you understand? They said, well, he, he came in with the flu. He has AIDS now. Get him out! You know how scared people used to be when they used to come to the hospital today? We got AIDS, all kind of stuff from here. People they know, look, man, just come on here. We got to work on these people. We got to go. That's the risk involved with being a nurse, being a doctor. You know, we can't function like this. We can't be that afraid of germs because that's all we got in here is germs. And you have to understand, brother, if you can't handle it, let somebody else do it. Now, I'm scared going out and touch him. Let him come in and have let, let her deal with that. Because I'm afraid to touch it. And you shouldn't. There's nothing you can tell the church about that we don't have the answer to. The righteous churches of Christ. There's absolutely nothing that you can say to the righteous churches of Christ. Listen. Proverbs 24.16 for a just man falleth seven times. That's a, that's a easy number, remember. And rise up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. See, that's the wicked. He can't get up. But if you tell him the hospital you at, we don't heal after the first shot you get. Why would I want to go there? What, what, what do you offer? What are you telling the world? And then watch this. When you get in trouble, then you got some saints going around saying this. When they get in trouble or you get in trouble, they tell you, well, you know, it's some things prayer just can't handle. Now, I know I said something. Now, I know you know somebody that said that one. Just think real hard. You got somebody in your life, so-called in the church, that has said some things prayer just can't handle. That's somebody get ready to cry when they die because that one's going to hell if they don't change. Because God's going to make sure that prayer you ask me about salvation, I'm sure not going to answer you. Make sure I'm going to close my ears and plug them when you ask for a rescue. People are crying for mercy. You know what James said about murder? We're talking about loving though. Now you know it's real. Because you got to love them too. Those hard ones. Now well, we're going to talk about love those that don't love you. But first you got to understand what they look like and what they sound like. And how they act. Listen. James 2 and 13. 
For he shall have judgment, because that's what we all got to do. The Bible says that. Corinthian letter. We shall all go before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged for the things we have done, whether good or bad. I was James, so James, okay. My turn, Paul, I got something to say too. For he shall have judgment without mercy. That's that you don't want to be this person that showed no mercy. Wow. I wonder if we knew that was in the Bible. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. See, because when you come for the judgment, the judgment says, No, I'm supposed to put you in here right now. Because you did some bad stuff. Mercy runs out and says, Hold on! It's time to rejoice. He's not going to do it because you gave it when you was on the earth. You know what? I love the preachers because this is the faith, repentance, and confession and baptism to the church of Christ who in, who think they in forever. See, this is your and my faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. You can't get in without this. Can't get in that you baptize. Can't get in that you give mercy. Everybody woke. I hope we woke. You're not getting in without being baptized in the church. And you in the church and me not getting in unless you give mercy. Prerequisite to entrance. This is what we're supposed to get silent right now because we're supposed to be processing. Processing. Yeah. You know why Shimia got killed? Set up for death? By a so-called righteous man on his way out when he pressing a down pillar. Would you put a death sentence on somebody while you pressing a down pillar? Would you whisper to your kid, make sure you kill Mr. So-and-so. Don't let him die with his hair gray. He did me wrong. Boom, and die and go straight on in the paradise. You know why I can do it? Because God wanted, hey, make sure you tell your son before you die. I want him to kill Shimia. Because he mocked you and said, I didn't. Listen to me good. Listen to me good, brother. Because he said, I didn't forgive you. Well, I know I have forgave you already. Mm. Some of y'all say that. I used to say it. Some of you say it by marriage. I know what I'm talking about. You're not getting in. See, this is the scripture that says you don't get to get in. See, because this is an after blood at baptism sin. Somebody gets a divorce and you play God and you don't give mercy. For your parents confess and you didn't get baptized, you're not getting in. Love, joy, happiness, service, baptism, but I didn't give mercy and you're not getting in either. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know I know what I'm talking about. I know. See, this is what's wrong with the saints in the kingdom. The Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, the scribes, the lawyers. Zeno had enough sense to get out of that nonsense and get himself in the Lord's church. That's why Paul still knows him as a lawyer. He said, tell Zeno the lawyer. I know what he used to be in the law of Moses. See, Paul's a Pharisee. It's not too many people that existed that Paul didn't know what you was about before you got in. You had something to do with the law. Paul's dad was a Pharisee. Paul said, tell Zeno the lawyer. Do thus and such. I know what he used to be. I know what he used to be. But he's with us now. See, this is what's wrong with the church of Christ. You want to know? See, it's not always why people don't get baptized. Because, you know, they don't want to. Sometimes they don't want to be with us. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about all around the world. Don't look at yourself. That's all around the world. See, they hear about us. Over there, they say, if you got divorced, you can never get married again. And over there, they say, if you got divorced, you can get married. But you can never be nothing. I've always wanted to be a leader. And where has been a church? I guess I just need to stay in a Baptist church. You don't think they think that? Because of some of us. I don't know what type of mercy you think this is. But I'm telling you now, if you think it's the mercy just forgiving somebody for doing something against you, you're not understanding the Bible. See, you have to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. See, God had a problem with this world. You know when he linked them to Sodom and Gomorrah and told the prophet... Tell Sodom and Gomorrah. Tell Sodom. Tell Sodom. Talking about Israel. He called them Sodom to the prophet. He said because they forget about the fatherless and the widow. See the fathers don't have nobody talking from. Them. Even today in this so called great America. Be fathers and watch your life get dogged out. Watch somebody pick on you. You can't say I'm going to tell my daddy because you don't have no daddy. 
That's right. You didn't know I having a father as a child is rough. People will tell you, your daddy won. And you have to say, my daddy did. Yeah. And you start crying. Fatherless hasn't changed because you got jet planes and computers. It's rough not having a father. And those who got it, you better appreciate your daddy. Whether you live in the house or not, as long as you come around doing something, you better be happy you got a daddy. A male persona in your life coming in. Because like people, people back off from houses and they see big men coming in. Okay, skinny men. See, that's a guy. I saw a dude keep coming there on Saturdays and getting that kid. It must be his daddy. Watch. Don't sneak around that house asking the lady nothing. Because that dude keep coming. He might want to, I don't want anybody around my son. What are you doing? Who are you? See, you have a father in heaven. Amen. And he gets real angry when people start bothering his children with nonsense. Mm -hmm. Telling them what they can and cannot do because of their fear of sin running rapid. That's the only certain sins they feel about. I never hear nobody say, if you tell people they can get forgiven for sinning, they going to start robbing everything. I never heard no nonsense like that in my 30 plus years in the church. I never heard nobody say nothing to anybody about If you tell people they can get forgiven for backstabbing, everybody going to be backstabbing. I don't even hear about fornication. I have not heard any of these Sick in the spirit saints rise up yet and say, yeah, you tell a girl she can get forgiveness after having a baby, having fornication, and she still not mad and going around, you going to have everybody having babies and going around single and having sex. I never heard it. But I hear about marriage all the time. You know why? Because we picked that sin. We picked that sin. It's the sin of the day. It's the lunchbox sin of the saints that's not right. And do you know, do you understand some of the greatest men on earth were murderers? Paul. Paul will take your life. He'll come right to that door with the authority of the city of Humble and take you in a cart and kill you in Jerusalem. And nobody would say nothing. Nobody. A murderer. A money grubbing, filthy lucre loving publican that even his own people didn't like. Matthew selected. A guy that'll cut your throat if you just say something bad about God. Mm. A religious zealot selected. You hear these folks? Oh, there's some good guys selected Andrew. He way better than Pete. He was already following John. Peter outside fishing and cursing, acting crazy, naked, out naked. That's him. Pick preaches the first message, and then when he get in, you imagine the guy who preached the first message ever gets so nervous when James' friends come around. He just gets up from simply eating with the Gentiles. He's he's so crushed. By peer pressure. You don't think peer pressure? See, we get on our kids all the time. Peer pressure never stops. You could be 90 under peer pressure. Yeah. This is a guy who touched, hugged, and saw Jesus. He saw a man walk on water, and he himself could tell you. Yeah, I walked on it for a minute. I, I, I was on the water, man. You know, that's rough water we be on. I, I literally, man, I just walked. And then I got nervous. And I dropped. He lifted me up, though. But he stayed on top of the water. And then, just because a guy come around him, he gets scared because he's eating with them. Then say was teaching. Say was preaching. Eating. And they come up. What are you doing? Here? And he remembers the law. So we're going back to the law for a minute. And Barnabas, as Paul said, even Barnabas. No, I said even Barnabas. In so much Barnabas. You know why I said in so much Barnabas? Because Barnabas said, man, that's all I've been talking to is Gentiles with Paul. And he gets up. Peer pressure. See, I used to think you could get mercy for everything somebody say. Until I heard this brother on the internet. And I found out we wrong. No you was right. Now you wrong. Because yeah. we can get mercy for anything. Mm. <sighs> this is no longer the place of redemption brethren. In some places. Don't let it happen here. Mm. This is the place of redemption. You can come in nasty, smelly, dirty. And God cleans you up. And then you leave and then you slip again. And come in. And now you stink just like you came in. And somebody said, he's stinking. Put him out. Or sit him on the back row. He can't do nothing. Because he's stinking. 
Allah says, I'm clean, but I haven't smelled him better than y'all. But the law says, I haven't smelled him better than y'all. Listen, a boy has sex, yeah, we're going to call it like it is, 21st century, with his daddy's real daddy wife. And he in the church of Christ. That's all that count. I don't know about it that. Don't worry, it never say about it that much. He in the church of Christ. We know this boy in the church of Christ. Sleeping. Now you think about your daddy. Married. And it's not his mama. It says mom. Your dad married a woman or got a woman. And you decide, I think I'm going to sleep with her. And the saints find out and they don't say nothing to you. You keep the boy in the church. We had a girl. We had service today. We had church. And Paul sends a letter and they read it. No, girl, y'all ain't have church today. Y'all on y'all way down. Because y'all not the hospital no more. The hospital has a medicine they must give. And you have to give them to the boy. So they give him medicine. Son, we casting you out. Spiritually, because this is the hospital, but you don't want to take the medicine. And he gets out. And he comes back. And 2 Corinthians, you hear in your ear. You see with your eyes. Paul says, I wanted to know if y'all are really with God. Let's go there. Oh, we got to go there, saints. Get your Bible open, turn your telephone on, whatever you got to do. And go to 2 Corinthians. This is the house of repair. Y'all ever took your car somewhere to repair a shop? And they go... We don't like working on that. You say, well, then you got anybody you know? Mm -mm. I don't know nobody in the city working on that. Oh, you lie. Uh, it's somebody can be. It's a church somewhere. Maybe y'all too weak. But that's another church of Christ. that they, they work on that stuff all the time. You go in there, you say, I got this, I got that, I got the other. And the guy says, oh, yeah, we fixed one of them yesterday. Bring your car, put it on the rack. He glad to get it. Oh, it don't start. Bob, come on out here. Let's get it going. Well, I couldn't get it started. We know what we're doing. Come back in three hours. It'll be ready. We already know. You come in and say, I lied. I stole. I cheated. Man, I had sex with two or three women. And man, I still was mad. Oh, come on. Sit down there. Somebody's like, oh, he cannot be helped. <laughs> Bro, you at the wrong church of Christ. Mm. See, this congregation here, what you got that you say is the dirtiest and the nastiest, bring it on. They're going to say, can y'all help? Yes! Rid oh, we have somebody there, there. Come on. Come on. And when they come, it's going to be, welcome. How you doing? Good to see you. First time here? I'm so-and-so. What's your name? Don't be with... You know what he did? He came from the Church of Christ and he was married before and got a divorce. Oh, Sister Sue fell out. Somebody get some water. Sister Sue fell out. He's been married before. The preacher passed out and knocked the pulpit over. He said, I don't know what he don't do now. Anything comes to the church now. You got the wrong church of Christ. I'm sorry to tell you. I don't care what the signs say. It'd be hard pressed getting in like that. No, I'm telling you what I know from the Word of God. Listen, look at 2 Corinthians 2. Paul says in verse 10, To whom you forgave anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest, he said, why did I do it? Lest, why did I do it? Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. See, Satan will get an advantage over you. If you don't forgive. Wow, this is a Baby milk, baby milk that just rolled down his throat off his cheeks. He can't choke it, just rolled down his little throat. That's how easy it is. If you don't forgive. He says, in the person of Christ, I forgave him. Why did he say that? He said, because Christ forgave him. But you're going to hold it against him. And that's many subjects we do that too. That's many subjects you do that too. Many, 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 many. Sometimes a brother can preach false doctrine. And he'd have to go to the denominational church to be accepted because the saints won't accept him no more. After he had said in a few messages, you know, I was wrong on that. And, you know, he, you know he, he, he used to teach tithes and offerings. We can have no parts for that. But he said he was wrong. But I don't know, brother. You know, uh, some things never change. Judgment. No mercy. No baptism can you get in. No mercy can you get in. This is so easy for you to remember. 
To the sinner, no baptism can you get in. To the saint, no mercy can you get in. I know you can remember that. No baptism to the sinner, you can't get in. No mercy for the saint, you can't get in. See how even God made it? I know some of us thought we was getting in without giving mercy. I know we did. I used to be one. But I realize as when I get to the door, it's like having a balloon in front of you. A big jammer, no big balloon they wrap on your body and you roll down here. It's like that you boom, boom, can't get to the door. The law says it's too narrow, son. You can't get in. There's too much hatred in your heart. You don't have no mercy. Listen. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Let Satan get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his advice. This is his device. You know how a guy breaking your car? They got all kinds of stuff. They got a thing now where they walk right by your car. Be ready. Be ready. And they walk right by your car. Everybody said, well, we know what it is. But you don't have nothing to stop. You walk by your car. Boop, it pops up. He don't want to steal it. He wants your laptop you forgot. I got to go to Kroger's Market to get some eggs. We got to bake a cake tonight for Grandma. And you left your laptop. He come by your car. Boom, boom. Get your laptop closed. Don't like his ears and walk up. Somebody see him close the door with your laptop in his hand and walk up. He already, he's in his mind. He like, I got your laptop. He looks like that's his car. Nobody gonna say that. Nobody gonna go real, real, no alarm, nothing. You know why? Because you will allow somebody to come in with a device where you won't forgive and take Christ right out of your front seat. You think you still got? You're getting your car from Kroger. You think you still got your laptop? You get home, you go, oh baby, go get my laptop out the car. Ain't no laptop in the car, mama. What? Yeah, they got you. <laughs> you give it for the judgment. Oh, go get Jesus. I, I left him, you know, I left him in the place. Nah, Jesus not with you in the judgment. He's at the front saying, I don't know you. Listen, 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 saints, listen. He says, furthermore, when I came to trash to preach the gospel and the door opened up to me, the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit because I found not ties, my brother. But taking my leave, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be to God, but causing us to triumph in Christ. That's how he triumphed. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place. Is that what you and I are doing? Are you doing that? Am I going to do that? You're going to make the knowledge, the sweet taste of Christ to the parched throat sinners in and out the church that there's hope for you. Saints, you got to get real. Some of us just do not want to forgive. Some of us. We don't want to forgive, brethren. You have to forgive. Paul says that there is something that he wanted them to do. He says, I want you to forgive him. I want, now, this, now remember, this is the guy that slept with his daddy's wife. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. He slept with his father's wife. How more evil could he be? This boy is a heathen from hell. Paul says, no, 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 no. You have to forgive him. 2 Corinthians 2 and 7. So that contrary rod. See, this is contrary to the nature of the man. This goes against everything he knows. But we're not supposed to be the natural man in the church anymore. We're superhuman because we're... You know what the word deals with super? The power of the law. It's a super. It makes you greater than what you were. And you can forgive things you didn't even know people did. He says, so contrary wise, you are right to forgive him. Watch this. And comfort him. Comfort him. I'm going to tell you what comfort means. 3870. To call near. To invite. To invoke imploration, horation, consolation. Come on, call for, beseech. I, I heard that you had gotten things right, but I didn't see you last Sunday. What happened? Well, when I, you know, I was shaking some hands, and uh, and so and so, so looked at me and said, "I hope you've learned your lesson." And scowled through her glasses at me. And said, I knew your father when we were children. It crushed me what you did. But I hope God will have mercy on you. I don't want to go down anymore. Come on back. Look, I'm going to pick you up, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And you come on in. Walk with him right past sister so-and-so. Yeah, walk with him right past sister so-and-so. 
And then when she make a move, say, how's your son? Now I'm talking about the one in jail. She might have to get her glass of water. Nah, she's going to pass out. She forgot she had some dirty laundry. She forgot she had dirty laundry. Ain't that sad? Got a boy in jail. People could judge you. I know some people that'll judge you for your kids being in jail. Right. To someone right in that house. <laughs> See, she forgot. You don't think that happens things all the time. Say, oh, Zane, why did you do all that? Because the rest of the message is easy. So you got to love sister so-and-so too. Because it's a house of redemption. With her crass skull. Brother Sonso's frown brow of brass. You got to love him too. Because you know why? Because they really don't love you as saints. But there's hope if you love them first. So you thought I was going to say cast them out. I can't cast them out. You start casting folks out. All of us got to go. All of us got to go. The cleaning man to come up and say, you know, nobody came this Sunday. But the cast us all out. Listen. Let's go to 1 John 5. I'm telling you, saints, you got to get this one right. This is the place where our lives are changed. Amen. This is the place. Not no way up. This is the place. You're in the right place. This is the place where our lives are changed. We have no part, have no place, have no hope for people who don't understand. We roll up sleeves and go to work on the dirtiest, stankiest toes on the planet in the church of Christ. Some toes have diseases. You know, you know when you wash feet, some people have diseases. You, you, you the foot wash, you have to put the pot of water. Oh man, this is an open sore. You gotta wash it. He love, the, the people in the house love it. Yeah. You didn't know that? You thought all feet were beautiful? Now you walk around with sandals on. Man, you talking about scratched up toes and bleeding feet. Feet so hard, callous. Feel like you're washing sandpaper. You gotta wash it. And they stink. Can you imagine that? They stink. What if he stepped in something? He stepped in something and he came in. You can't tell a master, I, 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 can't, I can't wash these feet. He stepped in something. I don't know what animal it is. I've never smelled it in my life. That's how I wash your feet. You're the foot washer. Clean him up. Verse 1, 1 John 5, 1. Whosoever believe that Jesus Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that beget, watch this, that be Jesus, loveth him also that is begotten of him. That's the saint. So if we love Jesus so much, then you've got to love the saints that he begot. Let your family tell it all the time. Most families have one sibling that acts crazy. There's always that one sibling that acts crazy in the family. Am I right? You know it. Oh, hey, he talk crazy to mama and daddy. Uncle Joe and everybody. He'll go crazy. Knock over stuff and he leave. Books fall. Crazy. You tell him something, you're punching your chest. Mama, him in the chest. Oh, he lying. I told y'all, he the, you talk about I'm evil. He the one evil. It's a crook. But if you love mom and daddy, you got to love him too. Because they're not fixing to throw him out. Uh uh, uh uh, saints. Uh uh, I gotta work together. Says verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. That's how you know you love. When we love God and keep His commandments. That is, that is right there. That is the lesson. That is the text. If you love God and keep His commandments, what did the Lord say? Are we gonna go there? What did the Lord say about love? He said something very important about love. And you claim when we claim we love Him. Now remember, how do you show you love the children of God when we love God, that's first, and keep His commandments? Remember the time, it's going to be easy. Love God, one, and keep His commandments. Remember the count. Love God, one, and keep His commandments. Now watch this. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not grievous. They don't bring grief. Like you think, I, he's not saying that nothing can make you sad. They're not grievous. They're not too heavy for you to carry. You know what the Lord said to heaven? That's what he said to heaven to carry. He said, you lay burdens on men that are grievous to be born. They're heavy to carry. What was one of the things they were laying? <laughs> Gotta wash your hands before you come from the market. 
So you clean with God. He said, but they lighten the load of the children, realizing forever you must be honorable to your parents. He said, you lay those other burdens on them. He said, you will make a widow give all she got to. She don't have a house no more. You'll eat it down. He said, it's too heavy. Sound like your tithes teaching the brethren, don't it? See that? See that? Ah, sounds like them, huh? Pretty heavy stuff on your back. 10%. 10%. Isn't that amazing? And don't even teach that, right? Isn't that sad? He says, for whatever is born of God, whatever cometh, overcometh the world. And this the victory overcometh the world. Even our faith. You see that? Do you believe what God has said? Do you accept that what he said is true? Do you actually think that we can get in heaven without giving mercy? And then if somebody doesn't have anyone to speak for them, remember the fathers, nobody to speak for them. The widow, you know what's wrong being a widow? No husband. They dog widows out. You know what a landlord will do sometime? Poor widow can't pay her rent. Children going to school. Oh boy, he goes, you know, Miss so and so. It's just, it's a difficult. But you know, there are many ways that these things can be worked out. And he winks at us. Because a man gone. He wouldn't have never said that. He might have got his neck broke. The children too little. They little. They can't find no big son in college coming home in the summertime. Take advantage. You didn't know that happened to widows. But she needs to get her life right with the Lord. We know this. That's why it's the hospital. So don't run her off. Did y'all hear that? Don't run her off by not giving mercy. Because then she might have to do that to keep the roof over it. Because she's not strong enough to say no. And wait a minute. I need a drink of water for this. Like Kermit the Frog said, I need some tea for this. Listen, listen. Listen carefully. Gotta hear this part. If she come to the church, God help her. Because we gave the money because we could build a high rise building. Did y'all just hear what I said? Did y'all just hear what I said? We ran out of money because we bought a thousand backpacks. Yeah. And she needs four thousand dollars. Oh, come to the church for four thousand dollars anyway. I didn't know we had that kind of money to give. But you bought backpacks. Uh oh, did I say something wrong? Saints not gonna like that, but Jesus loves it. So that's what goes wrong. And she need 4000 Wait a minute. She need 4000 every month for the next four months. Whoa! Give us a salsa or a glass of water. She's about to pass out now. See? You see, you see what's wrong with it? So she don't have a choice in her mind. Well, you know, I sleep with him. They told me I could get forgiven for fornication anyway. Ouch! Oh boy, snowball from here. Then it'll snowball. You didn't think snowballs would come from here, huh? Snowball from here. It just keeps bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with lie after lie after lie. And it's no longer the place where you can get cleaned up at. It's no longer the place where you can get read to. It's a joke place where we just come, turn a few flips, and hallelujah, God is good, and go on. But nobody is getting repaired because the people who are really sick eventually leave because they feel like they're nothings and nobodies. Because they have sin in their past. That's horrible, saints. What kind of place has the saints of God's dwelling become? Nevertheless, he says, verse 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And this is the Spirit that bear witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. And this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. That's what he gave us. Eternal life. And this life is in his son. Amen. So you tell me now, nah, you know what? You know what's on the internet now? 
If you baptize somebody, you got to take them in the back first and ask them have they been divorced ever? And if so, the blood of Christ is so weak. He said, you got to go and divorce her and see if you reconcile or stay single and then we'll baptize you. Bring the paper to show. It's in so many churches of Christ and it's tough. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm send it to you. I'm going to show you. It's talking about somebody some of us know and love. It's, it's like it's so funny. It's like, man, this can't be the hospital. A clinic is better than a hospital if it's like that. It's got to be the hospital, brethren. While major surgery is done. And you know what they do in some surgeries? They have the other physicians sitting around that are learning, looking to see how it's done. So that generation, when the old white heads, gray die, those hoary heads die, they know those guys sitting up there and those ladies, they're going to carry it on. And they're going to come up with new techniques to dig even deeper into this problem. All approved of by the medical association, and I was all approved of by God, the spiritual association in heaven. That's what you got to understand. This, brethren, is it still the church of Christ where you at? Not ask. Is it still the church of Christ where you at? Not ask. He says this. Verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin and sin which is unto death, he shall ask, he shall forgive, he give him life. For them that sin, he says, if you see somebody sin unto death, you can't ask for life. You know what you do? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I says, boy, this is good. Listen. He does a sin unto death. One of them is fornication. That's, that's, that's picked out easy. You can't ask for forgiveness. You got to go, but you don't, you don't run him out the street. Oh my God, help us, Jesus. He's in the hospital. If a guy come in bleeding, you don't give him a band-aid. This is that. Don't give him a band-aid. But you don't tell man, you bleed that way. You got to go. You can't tell him that one either. You got to say, hit the bread light. We need emergency now. He needs change added. Stop the bleeding. How do you stop the bleeding? You got to tell him, hey man, you can't do that sin. You can't do that no more. But we love it, but you can't do that. Right now, you've been detached from the law. I'm going to pray for you. After you repent. We need, to hear, we need to know you're going to stop this. What can we do to help you stop this? Well, you know, it's been rough because I have to live with her. Okay, well, you got to understand. I know you can't just go get another place in the morning. But you got to have enough strength to understand. You know how to get her off your back. Open up the Bible when you get home and start talking to her. Say, I'm going to tell you why we can't have sex anymore right now. We can get married. I don't really want to marry. Why are you living with her then? Maybe you the problem, brother. Oh, we see the problem. You the problem. How your leg bleed? Oh, you cut your own leg? Oh, you tried to commit suicide. Well, we got to help you. But you never run them out. Because this is the place where you get repaired. You say, oh, I can't have that much blood. Okay, take Bob in the back. Let Tom come. Mm -hmm. Tom puts his hand all in the bloody body and goes to work. It's too deep for Bob. Get Tom. Let Bob have the band-aids and the broken ankles. Bob can't pop open a chest with a, with a clamp and stick his hand in and massage the heart. Bob, the bone's scratching my hand. Okay, Bob, go ahead. Handle that area. That's some people with colds over there and flu. Handle them. That's what the evangelists are supposed to be doing. Setting things in order. Brethren, the church is not supposed to be chaotic. How would you like you walk to the hospital a nurse Sitting there sleepy, wake up, I'm trying, I got some issues in. We go, what? Huh? What is it? I'm not sure if I'm almost up. <laughs> huh? And the, you think the custodian will come and help you? Oh, what's wrong? Let me see. Put the mob down. Let me look in your eyes. You say, what? You just put, you're the custodian. That's all right. Thanks, man. That's all right. I know you don't know. Listen, saints. This is where you get repaired. If you're not getting repaired, you need to get one of the leaders and say, I don't feel I'm getting repaired, but you got to talk about what's wrong with you. 
and you have to take the medicine. Because if you don't take the medicine, you just sit in the hospital bed and die. Mm. Listen. All unrighteousness is sin, verse 17, and that is a sin not unto death. Put Bob in the coal and flu section because he can't handle the heavy stuff. He can't handle it. And that's what you and I have to understand. Listen, let's go back over here. Now I said we we're going to talk about a couple more things before we wrap up. Listen, look at, if you will, this thought. God commands us to love Him to our greatest degree and love man as our own selves. Look at Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Can't get in without mercy, saints. Can't get in the church without baptism. James said, can't get in without mercy. We're going to deny that James is right. Matthew 22, 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law. This is what he asked. Verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. God gets everything. Verse 38. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He says you can rest all of the law and all the prophets have said all the Old Testament. You can Hang it on top of if you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself. Guess what you'll be able to do? You'll be able to love all those that do not love you. Because you'll love them like you love you. You may say, she doesn't like me. He don't, I know he don't like me. He's told me he, he has a problem with me. Love him. Love him. You can't love him. It don't cost you nothing to love him. But you gotta do something. You gotta do something. See, some people come in to the hospital, they've defecated on themselves, urinated on themselves, their nose is running cold, they're vomiting. You go, man, look, this dude is shot. I'm out. No. Uh uh. They're going to come in, they're going to start wiping him. They have a bucket, they're going to start throwing stuff in the bucket. And then it gets, it's a like, guy got to come and clean it. You think they got, they don't have no four way sheet saints? Not there for everybody. Maybe certain diseases. They got to wash those sheets. And they stink. And then they got a, you know, that's a truck that comes up and picks up the carts and things that are full of all manner of diseases. And it's so critical, he can't take the truck if it's leaking. That's right. <laughs> he might pull in the crawlers and get him something to eat. And it leaks. And a kid's up it. And now the disease is everywhere. Somebody got to do it. You got to understand. You got to love those that don't love you. Because that's the love of God. And if you can't, you're not who you say you are. And you cannot prove you love God. Because he said to love God and to love the children is to keep his commandments. He put it on both. So love God. Say so you love God. And to love his children, you got to keep his commandments. So what happens when you break this? That's what we're telling you, old They broke the commandment. But the person who breaks the commandment, who tells you, I can't love if they don't love me, you work on them. Because you love those that don't love you. That's got to be a bomb in there. That's got to be a Tom in there. That'll go in there and get in there. You got to have it in every church of Christ. That's one. At least one. At least one. Now listen. Okay, we're wrapping it up here, saints. We're done. You must first display love. Watch this. Here's the key. This is how you open the door. You must first display love to those who do not love you. Say it again. You must first display love 
to those who do not love you. One more time. You must first display love to those who don't like you. Amen. You got to walk in when I say, I don't like you. They could just say, I don't like, what's what? I don't like you. Well, you know, can we sit down and talk about it? What's the talk about? That's what I'm saying. You know, I want to dig into your life. I'm like, what are the reasons? Because I make it alter some things. You know, because I, I love you. They may say, you're trying to play some kind of mind game on me, huh? I know you think I'm trying to psychoanalyze me. I just, I just want to know what I'm doing wrong while you don't like me. They're going to start talking. For stuff like this, I will get in my business. Okay, so if I don't ask what's wrong with me, how can I fix it? Because maybe if I fix it, you'll like me, we might get some things done together. See, see, in your mind, you think that don't work. That's because you don't love them as you love yourself. You know why? Because you want somebody to do that for you. If the Lord told you, look, and he asked, if somebody don't come to you, you're going to hell. The Lord has said, if you don't have a teacher, you're going to hell. There's no way you can make it. Romans 10, you're not making it. So we come to the Lord. David said, help me with my secret thoughts. You know you want somebody to help with your secret thoughts because you're not getting in until they help you with the secret thoughts. And I tell you, you can get help. With the secret file, you got to first know what the secret file is. You got to first know what it is. Listen. Look at John, if you will. Chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. The epistle, we're going to wrap up here. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Ye are of God, little children. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. And have overcome them, because great is he that is in you, and he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of verity. See, that's how we know. It's who listen to us. He said, he, it's who listening to us. That's how we know. He says, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. When Zacchaeus was in the tree, <laughs> Jesus came around the corner. Zacchaeus, come down. We're going to eat. We're going to eat together. He came down. He didn't, Jesus didn't tell him to do nothing. As he's coming down, people are like, man, he don't know me. Dude, this is a major tax collector. He came down and said, if I tell you something from some man, I give him four fall. Jesus said, he's a, he's a child of God too. He's Abraham, see? Why would I? Is this sin so bad? He's the number one IRS man against the Jews. <laughs> and Jesus said, I'm going to eat with him today. But he says, since you said that, man, I just wanted to see you. But now I have heard you. I'm going to go back four times if I took something from somebody. Do you see that? Jesus has to love him first. He's too scared to come near Christ. The sinner in the church of Christ, he's too scared to come near us. So you got to love him. He got to hear the understanding and the message. You got to let him know all things be forgiven. All things be forgiven. Even the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, this makes you in danger of it. I see we don't like all the gospel views because we like that one gospel view that nails it for us. He can't get forgiveness in this world and no world to come. But we, nobody like the gospel writer that says he's in danger of hell fire. See, that's a little bit different. That's why there's more than one. See, that's the problem, brethren. Because that one now says you even got to extend the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost mercy. And to give him mercy, you got to give him grace to get to him to see if you can get him to change his mind against the Holy Ghost. So you can rescue him or her. But he stinketh. What did Jesus say to, 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 to uh, the sisters? Of the man he loved. He stinketh by now, Lord. I'm not allowed to stay. <laughs> Jesus turned up and said, Did not tell you, you see the glory of God. We can't show you the glory unless we let him stink. Now I said, Brother, please hear me. 
We can't expose the glory of God unless you smell He stinks. Now you know when He come out smelling like roses. God did this. Because man, when they rolled that rock back, pew, that boy smelled nasty. Body rotten. Mm. He said, well, you got to see the glory of God. This is the only way. Roll it back. Ooh. Somebody might have threw up. Oh, this is nasty. Is this the only way? It's the only way. Lazarus, come forth. And he comes forth. You got to smell the stink. So God can say, see, y'all couldn't have done nothing with this. That's how I don't, man. But I can do something with him. I can make him smell just like you. That's what you got to understand, brethren. Listen, he says here, verse Number nine, and this is manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love. Not that we love God. Not that we love God. Not that we love God. When you go around telling people, I've always loved Lord, even though I was in the nominated church. No, you didn't. No, you didn't because you wouldn't have sinned. See, God don't come to nobody that love Him first because there's no one like I didn't know that. He loves us first. God knows they don't like me. Let's go get that one. See that one that the red shirt? He don't like me. Let's go get him. Hey, I love you. I want to help you. I don't like you. You want to get in my bed? I know, but let me tell you why it's going to help you. Tell me where you're dirty at. Let's reason together. I'll make you white as snow. But he told Isaiah to tell him. Well, we don't like that. He should already have come to the Lord. <laughs> He don't want to come. He's scared to come. And you got to convince him he loves you and he wants to help you. But I killed the man. And I killed him. And I killed him because I wanted to take his wife. David. Come on. I forgive you. David said, I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Nathan said, no, nah, he's forgiven. He loves David first. You know why? Because David didn't like God. He didn't even talk to him about Bathsheba. I'm going to get old girl. And if he don't have right, I'll kill him. And if Joab don't have it, I'll kill him. I'll kill everybody. And then when he's told you the man, it's over. God says, I forgive you. I forgive you. See, you're thinking David's asking for David says it's over. I've sinned against the Lord. My heart is broke. My spirit's going to try. I'm nothing. He doesn't want me anymore. I got you. Come on. See, you got to get that. When we come to the Lord, we still not right. He has to love us first. That's what the text says. And he says clearly. Herein. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation. That's a mercy seat. Look it up. I sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, now here comes. Remember, everything is one, two. Love God. But see, it's the opposite. Watch this, saints. God comes to you, and you know you're through. And God loves you first, and then you love Him back. And then you look at your brethren, guess what? They don't like you. And you got to be like God. You got to go love Him first. Mm. We get, boy, that's a switcheroo, isn't it? But wait a minute. If God loved me first, and I love Him, then they should love me first. No, 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 no. Because see, you've been strengthened. Now you got to go out and you love them first, and then they come to you like you came to God. That's the lesson, brother. And it's yours now. If you're here, you're not a member of the church. you got to leave the denomination church. you got to. There's no hope for you there. There's no hope for you. You can't make it. Acts 19, 1 through 5 says you can have been baptized and thought you've made a connection with Christ, and it is over for you. And you've got to get baptized again. Why? Because they don't have the gift of love, which is Christ in them by the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. And that's what you like. And that's why you can't stop sinning. It's a repeat. It's like a late night black and white show. It's a repeat. You can't get it right till God can come and brighten you up like technicolor with spiritual strength so you can survive. Because this world, Satan's coming back. For you, again, if you get away from it. So how do you do? You recognize Jesus died, the third day he rose again. First Corinthians 15, 1-4. If you're ready to accept that in your heart, 
then you've got to be baptized. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He that believes in the baptized shall be saved, he that believes not shall be damned. He promises that. He opens up with hope and ends with despair, knowing some will reject. You have a choice. When Jesus wrote the letters to the messengers to give to the churches, he said positive stuff out the top. But I got some against you. See, because you know, I, I, I can't take you till I can fix you. I got to fix you. The repair shop. See, when you bring the car and the guy says, we can do it. We got to run like new. You raise the hood. Don't raise the hood. I got to raise the hood. But I got tape and stuff on there. Why? It's all right. We're going to fix all that. We're going to fix all that. It's going to purr like a kitten when we through. Your life is going to run on all cylinders when you come to Christ. Amen. Peter says, when they ask, what shall we do? Acts 2, verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. There's no altar in that. And you shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise unto you and unto your children, all that are forth. Even as many as the Lord of God shall call, it with many other words that he testify and encourage them. Save yourself from this unto all that is perverted generation. Then they that gladly receive his word were baptized the same thing. Three thousand souls added unto them. And they continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine, in the fellowship, which is a walk in the light as Christ in the light, in the breaking of bread, which is the meal we're about to take, and in prayer. We have lifted them up and we'll lift up more. And the Lord, Acts 2 47. Isn't it good? He adds to the church such as be saved. Because if it was us, we might change our mind later. I added him. I think I want to remove him. Can't do it because Christ adds and he's the only one can remove. That's right. That's the blessing you have. Acts chapter 8. The eunuch wants to get baptized. That's the pattern. Of the two posts. You can't change it. Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you've got to confess it right. I'm going to baptize you, but if it's not right in the heart, Christ won't do nothing for you. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he goes away rejoicing after baptism, showing he believed. If you accept that, Peter says, this action will save you. How does he know that? Because Paul says, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Well, the Jew and Gentile bond of friend have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So when Peter speaks in... 1 Peter 3 21, the like fig, he says, went to even baptism. That was also now. So forget the thief on the cross, sweep him away. Now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And where is that? Going to heaven. What's his post? The right hand of God. What is he over? Everything. Angels, authorities, powers, principalities. They've been made subject to him. Who made them subject to him? God. His Father. The King made the Prince Christ. The king. And you rule instead. Till I make all your enemies. Your footstool. So you know who's saying that? God is saying. I'm going to make your enemies your footstool, son. I'm going to break them down. Just like David did for Solomon. See the pattern? When Solomon's like, oh, that's peace. Peace be still. You don't hear Solomon didn't know why. Peace be still. David brought it down. And God says, I'm bringing your enemies down. The last one I got, son. Last one on my list. Let me see. Death. He said, when I break that down, that's it. You're giving the kingdom back. And we're set. And they'll be with me forever. You can't do that if you're not in the church. But if you're in the church, you're in the church. Revelation 2.10. Bonafide, blood bought by the love and blood of the Lamb. Amen. If you don't give mercy, you're back to square one. You're on the bubble. Because Jesus said, go to the devil to cast some of you into prison. He'll bind you up. You have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. I give you everlasting life. You know what some of the binding is? The devil comes, put a situation around you, and locks you up. You got to give mercy. Now, I know you can't. I got him. He's in jail forever. You'll never give mercy. You'll never say they didn't give mercy for this. And you weren't faithful till death. And the Lord said, I came and visited you all the time in jail. I asked you just to give mercy. I'd let you out, but I can't now. You are lifer. Can't get out. Saints is not worth it. Do you want to live or you want to die? Just as we tell people got to get baptized, you got to give mercy. It's a non-option deal. Let them talk you out of mercy, just like they talk you out of baptism. Both be in the same place. If you're here not a member of the church, you can get baptized. We sit down, we stay standing, and identify. We'll baptize you today. If you're here though, you're a member of the church. You're struggling with mercy. You need prayer. You need it. Just like they need to get baptized, you need prayer. I suggest you ask for it today. Don't walk away. Don't walk away and don't get baptized. Don't walk away. 
with no mercy in your heart. Don't leave, saints. Talk to somebody before you go. See, we say that all the time. Talk to somebody before you leave without getting better. Talk to somebody before you leave without giving mercy. Mm. You need help. Because if you get in a car wreck on the way out of here, and you didn't give mercy, James says, there won't be nothing after judgment for you. We do that all the time, though. If you leave here without getting baptized, you have to come here. You have no excuse. You have no excuse for not giving mercy. I need to look at the subject some more. They tell you, I need to look at the subject some more. My dad is a Baptist preacher. So I need to look at the subject some more. Get baptized now and study later. You need to give mercy now and study later. Ooh, that knife goes back. We always say, swing's going and coming back. That's right. Except on mercy, some say. Uh-uh. Mercy, too. Just like we'll tell, I'm done. We're brunt. Paul says, you're telling me I can't be saved if I keep making animal sacrifices and I keep going to the temple, Paul, and I'm the high priest and I'm going to the holiest of holy. You can't be saved. And, and on the other side. So you're telling me I've baptized several people. I'm Peter. I preach the first message. You're telling me if I don't give mercy to the Gentiles and eat with them, you're telling me I can't be saved. He told him in Galatians 2.17, if we be found sinners, is Christ a merciful giver and lover of sin? No. He told Peter, you're a sinner. You walk contrary to the word. You don't give mercy, you're in the same boat as an unbaptized soul. Give mercy. It's free. Whatever you need. Come now, together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. I've wandered far away from God. Oh, I'm coming home. The sad of sin to love.